Well, good day, every, everyone. I've been delayed getting this out because my heart's been heavy. There have been quite a few people I know, believers, who have contracted COVID-19, and several, including younger people, by younger I mean 50s, have died from it. So um, several dear friends. Anyway, my own sister, by the way, on her second shot, uh, became paralyzed for four hours immediately upon the second shot. I was just talking to a lady today, and she's had some issues from her shots. And so I don't, I don't at all begrudge the people who want to uh, decide for themselves if they must take the shot or not. That's your choice. But anyway, um, now the wife of a dear friend from a different fellowship, a believer, died just today, uh, October 21. And it's very, very sad to me. Anyway, Satan is becoming more active. Uh, COVID-19 or not, I'm not saying that by itself is, is what I'm talking about, but we will have the victory in the end over him. We certainly will, but only after we're going through, we're going to be going through a tremendous amount of trouble first. And there's something very different in the past year or year and a half. So welcome to Light on the Rock, everybody. Welcome. I'm Philip Shields, and I'm the host of this free website. I want this message basically to convey two main points. We'll talk about them in depth as we go through some depth, whatever time allows. The first goal is to help convey to you in the strongest possible way that Satan and his demons have apparently been given the uh, open door, the uh, permission by God, as shown in Re Revelation, that they can start doing more and more within parameters. So we're going to see... In the coming years, between now and the return of Yeshua, whenever that is, whether that's in 9 or 10 years or whether that's in 30 or 40 years, I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to see in the coming years more and more and more activity from the evil spirit world, and we better be ready for it. Absolutely ready. He's angry. He's the God of this world. He's pulling the world together now, coordinating everything. Uh, one New World Order has been talked about for 50 years or more. Globalism, all acting in lockstep together and trying to alienate the people of God from the powers that be. So you need to be ready for this. You really need to be aware. You really need to be aware that you're going to be watching more and more satanic activity Many of you, many people will not be aware it's satanic activity. They'll just say something's different. Well, it's not going to be business as usual. It's just not. So there is now a foul overriding spirit, a mood, a direction being led by Satan himself that is now coordinating, especially the Western democracies and countries, the USA, Europe, Australia, the Western democracies, even Japan, even though it's out there in the Far East. But can you see that happening? Uh, Satan's always been coordinating his world. He's the god of this world. But something is definitely different this time around. And so um, we need to know uh, that as we pray thy kingdom come, we're also praying that all the bad stuff that has to happen before Yeshua returns also comes. The time of greatest trouble the world has ever seen, especially against the saints. And soon that coordination of all the events by Satan and his demonic evil spirits will have a direct pointed assault on the believers, God's saints, in other words. We shouldn't fear it, though. At some point, those of you who are sticking like glue to Yeshua, those of you who are seeking him with all your might, those of you who are abiding in him, like John 15 says, will be taken to a place of safety. I really believe that. Not a rapture to heaven, but a place of final protection just before the return of Yeshua. Remember that the Israelites, when they went through the plagues of Egypt, did go through the first three themselves with the Egyptians, starting with plague number four with the stinging flies, 
You can read that in Exodus 8, I believe, verses 20 to 24. God told Moses to tell him, hey, but the land of Goshen is going to be spared this. I think either all of the rest, the remaining seven, or most of the rest, Goshen was where the Israelites lived, was uh, exempted from having to go through the hail and the locusts and all of that. Uh, it's really clear on, on plague number four, plague number nine, plague number ten. It's really clear that Goshen was spared on those, and probably all of the remaining seven. <clears throat> My point is, I think God may have, God will have us believers go through a terrible time as well, initially with the world. And then there will be relief, finally, just like what happened in Egypt. So the first goal is be aware there's a lot, a big uptick of demonic activity. Um, number two, we'll talk more about that. Number two, the main goal, second main goal. I want to give you positive hope and a feeling that in your heart that you will be uh, protected if you're abiding close to God. If you're not abiding close to God, he will have to refine you in the fires of, of trial and tribulation. And uh, you will go through uh, the very worst of the worst times. Those who, whom he knows will give up their lives if they have to. He'll allow them uh, to be taken to a place of safety. All of this is in context with next week or so coming up real soon. Halloween coming up here. If any of you, you can look up my website. Just go to the search bar. Maybe we can show you that. Go to the search bar, type in Halloween, and you will see there's all kinds of there are all kinds of blogs and, and uh, mostly blogs, but articles and sermons about how God's children must not, must not be involved in Halloween. Must not. We cannot share 1 Corinthians 10, verses 21 to 22. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Do you provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Paul is saying you can't mix and match the stuff. If you are coming out of the world as we should be, if you have accepted Yeshua as your Savior as you should have, then don't be involved at all in Halloween. Don't be watching the movies. Don't let your kids get involved in it. Just don't. We have no business opening a portal, a door, a stargate, whatever you want to call it, into satanic activity into our own brain and minds and homes. Your home should be like your castle. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We must not, must not be having anything to do with Halloween. Certainly Jesus, we know Jesus would have no part in Halloween. We know that. He would not be celebrating demons, witches, and wizards, and ghouls, and horrors, and, and scream movies, and Chucky, and uh, he, you know, uh, Harry Potter, even the, some of you love the, uh, about the ring, what do you call it? The, uh, anyway, the rings, you know, the, that, that movie, just don't be watching them. Uh, the, the people and the features and the figures that they feature in these movies are satanic. I haven't watched them. I haven't watched any Harry Potter movies except just a few minutes just to make sure that, in fact, there was a, a movie about wizards and witches, and it certainly is. Don't watch any movie that's dark, anti-God, violence-filled, designed to be scary. And when you focus on the demonic, you're opening your mind to it. We're going to have victory over them, but not if you're playing around with Ouija boards, Halloween, and uh, tarot cards, uh, coffee grounds, or tea reading the tea leaves, or whatever. All of that stuff is not of God. What we're supposed to be watching is Philippians 4.8 and thinking about Philippians 4, 8, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, there's nothing noble about Halloween, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So we don't go to seances. We don't ever play around with hypnotism. We don't go to mediums and watch what they have to say, hear what they have to say about talking to the dead. We certainly don't have a Ouija board in our house, and you don't. I hope you don't. If you do, immediately burn it, get rid of it. Don't have anything to do with it. 
and uh, we're not watching any movies, even the ones that seem safe enough. Uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Casper, um, you know, all the ones that seem harmless, uh, Ghostbusters and so on. They're not harmless. They're not. Do not watch any shows about wizards, gremlins, living dead, ghosts, so on. Haunted houses, paranormal activity. Stop! In Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name, stop! Because you're going to be opening the door and there's, there's going to be more and more activity from them. Remember that Yeshua himself, you can read that in Luke 10, sent out 70, some translations say 72 disciples to lay the groundwork for him to visit other cities. He gave them power over sickness, power over demons. Let me read that to you. Uh, certainly uh, Mark 16, verses 17 to 18, you can read that. And when they were all done being sent out and they came back, look what they said in Luke 10, verse 17 to 20. And then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to, your, to us in your name. And he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. The first time that Satan had rebelled against God, long, long time ago, Yeshua was, was there with God. He was the word with God. He saw Satan fall like lightning. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, which are types and figures of demonic uh, powers, and over all the power of the enemy. So again, there he calls it over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Verse 20 now, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven, in the book of life, in heaven. So we don't need to ever fear demons, but neither should we be fooling around with them. It should not be. Don't be watching anything to do with them. Don't be tampering with it. Don't be inviting them into your life into any way you can. Just don't. I'm talking about this because it's clear to me that God has allowed Satan more leeway in the last couple of years and going forward, I think, and that he is the God of this world. Uh, he's always coordinated his kingdoms on this earth, but boy, not like we've been watching. Uh, he, I think he's handed out his talking points to world leaders. I really do. They're pretty much saying all the same thing. So we're not fighting human beings here. We're not fighting whether it's Trump or Biden, the leader we have at the time. We're not fighting those people. What we're fighting, let's read it in Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 13, are spirit beings that are controlling all these. You remember in Daniel, I forget what chapter it was now, I think it's Daniel 9 or something. I think it's Daniel 9, where Daniel is fasting, and, and, and the, uh, the good angel comes, and I think Gabriel or somebody, the good angel comes and says, I was detained by the prince of Persia until Michael came and helped me out. So, I mean, the, there are demonic powers that are leading. Persia is what we'd call Iran today. So, in the last couple of years, we're seeing things around the world that just aren't the normal things. We're watching for a fact, as Paul called it, the involvement of spirit beings, spirit powers over the world leaders. Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. My main point is verse 12. Ephesians 6, verse 12. We're not fighting against, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Two years ago, I gave three sermons about demons. I'm going to need to give some sermons about the good angels. And really, because there's a lot to say about good angels. They come in different types and appearances. We need to address this again today. Um, I'm going to show you from my notes what it looks like. Part one, part two, part three. Uh, the title is Satan and His Demons. All you have to do is put that in the, in the uh, search bar and type in Satan and His Demons, and you'll see part one, two, and three up there. They were from uh, July 27 to August 17, uh, 2019. If you haven't heard those in light of what I'm talking about today, please go back and hear them again. You'll understand the 
evil powers that be a lot better if you listen to it and how we gain the victory over them, how we're not to be afraid of them, but not toying with them either. In my 45 years of working in the ministry, I've cast out demons. I've spoken with demons. I've heard their voice. I've read their statements. They've put blog sites up. I've rebuked them. I certainly have experienced them. Don't play around with these evil spirits. So the first one, uh, Satan has demons, shut the door. It's part two as well. And how, we, how Satan can bind people with illnesses, but we don't need to fear them. Then part three is our total victory. So what's God doing? What's Satan doing with God's permission? Remember that Satan can only go as far as God allows him to go. Satan is saying the same message around the world now. Coronavirus, it's pretty much the same message being said all over the world about lockdowns, about uh, policies, getting vaccinated, the requirement to have a vaccine passport. It's not here yet in America, but it's going to be more and more so that way. It's going to be ever harder to travel, to fly anywhere, to enter businesses. It's going to be ever harder. The stage is being set to someday, with all this practice, to know exactly how to set up the system to quickly have a beast system of revelation to where you can't buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast coming up. I'm not saying the vaccines and all that are mark of the COVID is mark of the, I'm not saying that, that they're mark of the beast. I'm not. I'm saying the systems are being readied and tried and tested. They've learned that by having emergency measures, they can go right around the Constitution and pass an emergency law that you have to shut down businesses or you have to have a vaccine passport or you have to close down restaurants or whatever. They're setting the stage so they know how to operate it when they need to. Some believe this mRNA uh, trial vaccine, it's been approved now by FDA, but they don't know really what it can do down the road five or 10 years down. The long-term effect is largely unknown, unstudied. They can't study it, it's not enough time yet. And uh, some believe it can open the door to manipulation of all the cells of our body. I don't know, be aware of that. Western governments, inspired by the same spirits, are moving now, they're all saying the same thing. They're moving against the traditional family, the father, the mother, the children, and that's being called sexist and racist. Even comedians who say gender is a fact. I think Chappelle was one of those. It, now being picketed and everything else. Gender is a fact. You know what? God said in Genesis 1.27 that God created mankind in his image Male and female, he created them. Gender is a fact. So um, there's a book, I forget her name, it's called Irreversible Damage, I think something like that, the word irreversible is in there. It's a bestseller. It's about how adolescent girls, especially, uh, higher than ever before, are questioning whether they want to remain a girl. In most cases, 70 or 80% of the time, that goes away as they get older. But um, now they go online. I, I'll tell you people, I would not have a, uh, any of my kids or teens have their own cell phone and access to the Internet. I, I just wouldn't because they're getting so much garbage out of that. And many of them are committing suicide because of it. They don't feel good about themselves. But anyway, God made them male and female. So don't buy into this woke, there's no sex kind of a thing, nonsense. They're moving lockstep, the whole world is, towards this Green New Deal and uh, attempting to unite everyone in a way to stop coal, stop oil, and eventually you won't be able to have a lawnmower or a car that runs on gas. So they go with inefficient wind power that if it freezes over like it did in Texas, they don't even work. They don't even work. So... Um, Solar power also works for uh, a time, but I mean, there are problems with these things. We should keep our base, the oil and the, and the coal and all, keep the base while we explore new, uh, new power sources as well. They want to remove our borders so that in America, the whole world can come here. I just got a report today that Gallup did a study that 42 million, 42 million People around the world intend to come to America now that the borders are wide open. We don't have borders. They're not even trying to 
uh, prosecute anyone who comes over illegally. So Western Europe, United States, uh, we're coming down to the one world, no borders, you know, be watching these things. Meanwhile, the U.S. is being just pushed down faster than I've ever seen a country pushed down. The fastest decline in American history that I've ever seen in our power, our military might, our economic might. Uh, horrible. Absolutely horrible. I've never seen it go so fast. The Afghanistan pullout was a shameful debacle. We left $86 billion worth of the very latest equipment that even our own forces don't have all that latest night goggle vision stuff and the best of the best. And it's all there now for China to reverse engineer. We're seeing the borders wide open, like I said, sex slaves definitely happening. Inflation is skyrocketing. Reminds me of the Carter years. And we got to somehow just expect less, we're, we're told. Don't, don't expect so much. Satan wants America, the original America we might have known 20 or 30 years ago or 50 years ago, with a solid nuclear family, uh, a, a Judeo-Christian based nation. All of that's going. All of that's going. Now, we may yet see an ebb and flow where things seem to get better for a while and then back down again and get better again. But the last couple years have truly been different. It is not business as usual. It is not. And when the end comes, Yeshua said, Jesus said, it's going to be like a snare. You know what a trap is like. You just, you're just poking around and bang, the trap shuts and you're in it. And there was no warning. You didn't know it was there. So he's saying, watch, be careful, watch yourself, watch your relationship more than anything. Luke 21, verses 34 to 36. After, Luke 21 is the parallel chapter to Matthew 24. In Luke 21, he says, verse 34, Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares, worries, concerns of this life, your health, your finances, things like that, and that day come upon you unexpectedly. For it, it, don't let it come unexpectedly, he's saying, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch, therefore, I'll give a sermon on this worthy bit coming up in the coming months. Pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So it's going to get rough. You don't want to go through the worst of the worst times. And you don't have to if you're very close to God. He may count you worthy to escape these things. That's what I'm trying to say. We're also watching the growth more and more. The steps are being taken toward one world religion. I'll speak more about that some other time. But the Bible in Revelation 13 and 2 Thessalonians 2 and other places speaks of a great man of sin, an antichrist, a great false prophet working hand in glove with the beast system. And this Antichrist is going to unite all the nations and religious leaders and tribes and churches and religions of the world. And progress is already being made in that end. You're going to see the Catholic Church reunite with, uh, you know, the, the, the various Protestant groups that protested. You're going to see them uh, making steps to come together with Islamic groups. And uh, you just watch. It's, it's, I, I have some information already on that. Now, we know that at the end of all that, we know at some point Satan and his demons, the evil angels, will attack God's kingdom in heaven. And they'll be thrown down back to the earth. Remember, Satan means enemy or adversary. And devil means slanderer. If you're ever slandering and gossiping other people, especially other believers, you are a devil yourself. And you're working for the devil. Don't listen to anyone who wants to tell you devilish, slanderous things about believers, especially who may have by that time deeply repented and have changed. We have no business letting Satan speak into our ears by these gossips and slanderers. As long as you stick like glue to Yeshua, 
we have the victory. You might make a note. Uh, I'll ask Scott to post Revelation 9, verses 1 and 2 or 3. It says at some point an angel is given, probably Satan is given, the key to what's called the bottomless pit or the abyss. Apparently somewhere way down there, God has imprisoned, has jailed, has chained up the worst of the worst demons. Some call them the watchers uh, that were terrible, absolutely terrible. And they're really weird. They're really bad. But in Revelation 9, the, the, that pit is opened up and they're allowed to come out and cause great pain to a lot of people. Go ahead and read the whole chapter. And um, you don't, you don't want to, they can't touch those who have God's seal. So you want to have God's seal on you. Uh, but this is going to be a terrible, terrible time. And they're going to go around the world. And it says uh, in one of those there, it says that uh, uh, they have power to kill one third. One third of humanity. Now we come to Revelation 12, verses 3 to 6. Talks about Christ's birth and how Satan was right there trying to kill him uh, by having Herod purge and kill all of the young male toddlers in Bethlehem two, two years and down. And then persecuted the believers for so long. So let's pick up now in Revelation 12, verse 7. I mean, Satan did persecute the believers. It's good for you to review this right now. You might think you know it, but let's, let's read it again. There's a blessing on those who read the book of Revelation. Chapter 1 says that. So Satan's going to make another attack. He's going to try another coup d'etat. Revelation 12, verses 7 to 12. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. So there's this archangel Michael. It doesn't look like God even uses all his angels. Just Michael and his troops fight the devil called the dragon. You guys don't have anything to do with dragons. You people in China and, and Asia don't have anything to do with dragons. I won't even eat in a Chinese restaurant it's called dragon something. I won't. Okay, dragon is Satan. Anyway, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Satan has demons attacking. They were cast down. So the great dragon was cast down, cast out, that serpent of old. Serpent of old going back to Genesis 3. And that was the first thing our parents, Adam and Eve, did wrong. They dabbled with, they fooled around with the satanic spirit, Satan himself. Look what trouble that caused. Don't fool around with Halloween, with spirits. Don't, don't, don't. Anyway, so the, verse 9, the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil, slanderer, and Satan, adversary, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God, the power of his Messiah, his Christ, have come for the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. So the brethren, it goes on to say in verse 11, Revelation 12, 11 and 12, but the brethren, they overcame him, how? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, that, and they did not love their lives to the death. So agree right now. I don't know how much time we have left. You've got to hear this. Agree right now. You will not love your own life to the death. If you have to do something, you have to deny Christ, you have to uh, curse his name or, or whatever, something wrong, or you have to break the commandments, agree right now, you will not. Even if it means they're going to cut your head off, you will not give in to that. So they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That means we've been forgiven and washed by the word of their testimony. No, I am not going to deny my Savior. I love my Savior. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And the sea for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows he has a short time. So then what does he do? He goes after the woman. Many believe, I'm not one of them, that that's referring to the Revelation 744,000. They say Jews and all that. That's all wrong. It says the 12 tribes for one thing, not just Jews. <clears throat> I believe this woman is the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ is identified in Ephesians 5, 25 to the end that it's the church, it's the called out ones, it's the ecclesia. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11:2 that I have betrothed you as a chaste virgin to Jesus. 
So the called out ones, the church. So what am I doing here? I'm calling your attention to recognize that the lockstep actions of so many Western nations, especially, are being inspired by Satan himself, but we don't need to fear. It's going to get tough. It's going to get really tough. And frankly, like the, the lady friend of ours, married to one of our friends, um, who died today of COVID, there's a wonderful verse, we'll read it later, Isaiah 57, 1, that he takes them now to spare them from the evil days to come. Isaiah 57, 1. So we don't need to fear them, but neither should we be dabbling with them at all. Don't have a portal into your brain. Okay, Revelation 12, verses 13. Let's pick up again now. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go through some persecution ourselves. And then right at the very end of it, the very worst of the worst, I believe God spares us. When the dragon saw, in verse 13, Revelation 12, 13, that he'd been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place. Sounds like it might be a place she's been before. I do have sermons on here about the place of safety, by the way, if you want to Google it. <clears throat> Where she is nourished for a time and times and a half, for three and a half, for three and a half years, from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent sent water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, and uh, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. Now, the floods in the Bible often refer to armies in other verses. So he may send an army after her. But the earth helped the woman. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the armies or the flood or whatever the flood is. Or it might be a literal flood. I don't know. Whatever it is, God's going to take care of us. Which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Now in Daniel 12, definitely speaking about the very end times, it says that those who are written in God's book of life will be accorded protection. Daniel 12, verse 1. Daniel 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael, the same Michael as in Revelation, shall stand up the great prince who stands over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. We don't want to go through the very worst of the worst time. You want to be sure that you're in a place of safety. At that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who's found written in the book. Right now, you need to be asking God, Father in heaven, please, please write my name in your book of life. Please, Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Please, Father, let me live out the life being governed by Christ in me, in my heart, in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and those people are taken to a place of safety. Revelation 12, uh, we just read that in verse um, 14, and uh, 14 and 15, and Daniel 12, verse 1. Revelation 12, 17 reveals a remnant, though, who do not go to a place of safety. Verse 17, the dragon was enraged with the woman, and went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God, including the fourth one, the seventh day Sabbath, who keep all ten of the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So these remnant ones are the ones who are, who are going to go through the final three and a half years of time of worst trouble. Probably many of them will be killed, beheaded, it says in many places. So, um, that testimony of Jesus Christ is defined in Revelation 19.10 as, as having the spirit of prophecy, but it's also defined in 1 John 5, we'll post these on the board there, 1 John 5, verses 10 and 11, that these are people who believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God through whom they have eternal life. So the testimony means they know what's coming in prophecy and they're very willing to accept Jesus as their Savior, Yeshua is my king. Yeshua is the Hebrew name he had. So anyway, if you're not taken to a place of safety someday, <clears throat> and it's getting really, really rough, and you have to face death or, or denying Christ or something, go all the way. Go all the way at that point. Faithfully, faithfully proclaim Jesus is your king and Lord. 
but don't make getting to the place of safety, don't make that your goal. It, it's not our goal. Our goal is to be uh, accepted by God as part of his family, to receive the Holy Spirit, to be in the first resurrection. That's our goal, to be in God's kingdom, not to be in a place of safety. I, I'm saying if you're close to God, if you're stuck to Yeshua like glue, you will be in a place of safety. I'm pretty sure of it. <clears throat> and anyway, your goal is to be in that first resurrection when we're called to spirit, immortality. There's a body of flesh, there's a body of spirit, and we shall be born of spirit. That which is born of spirit is spirit. John 3 says that. We can never die. Uh, I think that's Revelation 20, verse 6, that says those in the first resurrection, the, the second death has no power over them. We'll never die again. So in the final coming years before Christ returns, scripture after scripture says demons are coming for us. They'll use government. They'll use the beast power. They'll use the church system. They'll use your friends and neighbors. They'll use your own family. Jesus says, son will betray father. Father will betray son. Mother will betray daughter and vice versa. It's going to be terrible. Know it. Know it's going to be terrible. And you are not going to heaven in a rapture. You simply are not. Otherwise, how do these all make sense? And all these verses that we'll read some more that... that uh, the saints will be terribly persecuted. <clears throat> they're not up in heaven. Uh, they're here on earth. And they're proclaiming Jesus. Some will be protected. Some will not. So we must be strong. 1 John 4, 4 says, You are of God, little children. You are of God. And have overcome them because he who is in you, that's Yeshua, that's God the Father, come and abide and make our home, our lives their abode, he says in another place are greater. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. We don't have to fear Satan. He should fear us. When he sees us on our knees praying, when he sees us repenting of things where we fell short, he should fear us. Because we're going to someday judge angels, 1 Corinthians 6 says. So be using the time we have left before Christ to come near to God, pray to him often, be seeking him, and overcome the habitual sins you've just got to lay out before God. Say, Father, I've been working and working on this problem or that problem, whatever the problem is. I just don't seem to overcome it. But I know Yeshua can. Yeshua, come live in, inside of me with your Holy Spirit. Yeshua, beat these problems, these sins that I keep popping up in my life. I don't want them popping up. You have yours, I have mine. We need to be praying those things. John 15, verses 4 and 5. Abide in me and I in you, Christ speaking here, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. You can't do it. You've got to be praying first thing every day, all through the day, middle of the night. Get up and pray once in a while. Uh, these people who've all had the COVID, uh, I've been getting up middle of the night. It's just my mind's on them and I'm praying for them. Some of them are healing up. And some of them, a few of them, are dying. Very, very troubling to me. We should be seeing more healings than we're seeing. Anyway, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide. Stick like glue to me unless you abide in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. So even Yeshua said that without the Father, he could do nothing. He understood that every word he spoke had to come from God the Father. Everything he did had to fit into the will of God. We have to follow that example. Every word we speak has to be words of Jesus. Everything we're doing has to be the life of Yeshua. And where we find ourselves falling short, we repent and we come before God and change. God's work is to see us to the very end. Watch my next sermon. I'm going to do a, a redo video about perfection God's way. God's perfection in us, God's way. Please watch that. It's a sermon I gave at the feast, and uh, I'll be re-recording re it soon here so you can all hear that. I think very important topic. So our goal, our work, is to spend and work hard at getting close to Yeshua, abiding in Him so we can overcome, so we can bear much fruit. 
asking for his Holy Spirit to fill us, using his spirit to defeat ongoing sins. Now, Satan and his demons and the people they use will not have a long-lasting power over you. They might kill you. That's as far as they can go. But Yeshua said, don't worry about dying. Okay, let's read it. Matthew 10, verses 28 to 32, 33. Matthew 10, 28 to 33. Don't fear those who are able to kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, your eternal life. Fear him who's able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? Not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. I know exactly how many hairs you have, Philip, God says. Don't fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. He said, every sparrow I'm aware of. Verse 32, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I will also deny you before my Father in heaven. That's the perspective God has. I don't care what pain, suffering, and trial I put you through, God's saying, you better not deny me. You and I have to get that really firm in our hearts now and for the rest of time. Luke 12, verses 4 to 5. This life is a training ground, preparation for all eternity. Use that time for putting God above all else that we feel we need to do or have to do. Make sure you're praying every day, many times a day. A good solid prayer in the morning, a good solid prayer at night and during lunchtime or something. Luke 12, verses 4 and 5. I say to you, my friends, don't be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that, have no more they can do. Like the way it puts it there. They can't do anything else to you. But I'll show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after you have been killed, has power to cast you into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Don't deny him. Don't deny Yeshua, whatever you do. I think the time is coming that the world, under Satan, again, our enemy is not the world leaders. Our enemy is not Trump or Biden or anybody else or whoever your prime minister is or president is. Your enemy is Satan and his demons working through those people. But someday they'll all be, we'll all be one together with them. Satan using his people will try to prohibit you even using the name Jesus, the name Yeshua. You watch. And if you do, you could be killed or go to jail. It's already that way in so many countries in the Southeast Asian part, Central Asia, everywhere from Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, the Hindu countries, India, the Buddhist countries. They are really attacking believers in Yeshua. Many of them are being killed. I get Voice of the Martyrs, and I hope you'll subscribe to it as well. Voice of the Martyrs, get their emails. Why should we be spared when our, our brethren in these poor countries are having to go through so much, risk their lives? It's awful. So it's okay to be persecuted as long as you're in Christ, abiding in Him, and confessing Him. Uh, you're being prepared for eternity. Okay, Luke 12, verse 8 and 9. I say to you, Luke 12, verse 8 and 9, whoever confesses me before men, him, the Son of Man, will also confess before the angels of God. Make sure your name is being confessed in heaven because you're talking and living Yeshua, living Jesus Christ. But he who denies me before men, we can deny him by our actions too, will be denied before the angels of God. So you're going to see and hear of ever stranger events, more and more persecution. Don't forget, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world, but we don't fool around with demons, okay? You're going to see much more demonic activity coming out. Watch the eyes of world leaders as they speak. Some of you will catch it, that they, he may have a demon, uh, whoever he or she is, uh, but watch for it. We're going to see more and more UFO sightings. And for the last six months to a year, we have. We have. A lot of you have this notion that angels just fly with their wings and zoom. They, they can build things. And the scripture is clear in Ezekiel 1, I think chapter 9 or something. 
that they have this wheel upon wheels and they have some kind of contraption that they can travel. Anyway, we're watching UFOs that are able to do things that nothing we have on earth can do. I believe we're watching demonic activity when we see that. But anyway, so watch, but we'll see it as a united front eventually against God's people, God's children. But stay faithful. Let's be turning to Daniel 7. God's calling you and me to deep repentance. God's calling you and me to seek him with all our hearts. God's calling you and me to pray like we've never prayed before. God's calling us to forgive those who have things against us. He's calling us to unite with fellow believers so the whole world can see. The whole world can see that no one loves one another as we do in the body of Christ. But right now, many of the believers are split up into corporate groups. That's not of God. 1 Corinthians 1, Paul says, who baptized you? Were you baptized into Paul or Peter? No. So why are some of you saying that you're a Peter or you're a Paul, or you're of Apollos? Nonsense. He said, stop it. Stop it. So we're going to go through much, much more testing. We're going to go through pain and suffering, deaths in the family. It's all part of the program. Suffering is what perfects us for forever and ever. So how does it all end up? Daniel 7, I might just hit some of the main things here. We'll put the whole thing up on the board. You can be reading it. Daniel has these visions of these beasts. I'll pick up in Daniel 7, 15 from the New American Standard Bible. Daniel, my spirit was distressed within me. The visions of my mind kept alarming me. Verse 15, verse 16. I approached one of those who were standing by, the angels, and began asking him the exact meaning. So he told me, verse 17, these are great beasts. The kingdoms of the world, their empires are called beasts by God, which are four in number, four kings, not just the last beast, Mark of the beast and the beast power. Not just the last one's called the beast. All four of them. Starting with Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greco-Macedonia, and then Rome. And resurrections of the Rome Empire. Verse 18. The four kings who will arise from the earth, but the saints of the highest one, the most high, God the Father, will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever for all ages to come. So he starts by giving the the end point. God always likes to know what the end point is. The end point is we win. The end point is we get the kingdom of God. But between now and then, there's some terrible persecution. Then I desired to know the meaning, verse 19, of the fourth beast. And this is talking about the final coming power, beast power coming with ten horns, verse 20. And another horn that comes up, speaking horrible things, verse 21. I kept looking. And that horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them. Verse 21, making war with the saints. If all the saints are up in heaven in a rapture, how can that verse even happen? Making war with the saints, overpowering them until the Ancient of Days came. Judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one and the end time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. Verse 23, the fourth beast will be the fourth kingdom, devours all the kingdoms of the world, treads them down, crushes them. Verse 23, verse 24, the ten horns out of this kingdom, there are ten kings that will arise, and another will arise after them and will be different, will subdue three kings. You may not understand all that yet, and I don't know if I do, frankly, but he's just saying there's going to be governmental powers guided by Satan and his demons, as we know in Ephesians and other places. So notice verse 25 now. There will be attempts made to make you give up, to make you just say, I can't take anymore. You'll be so worn out, so exhausted. But don't give up. So uh, in verse 25, it says, I thought I had it written down here, I don't but I'm pretty sure it says that he will wear out the saints. The original Aramaic word here, Bela, literally means to wear out, exhaust you, frustrate you, stress you out, oppress you. 
especially in the final three and a half years before Christ returns. So you've heard it now. I'm crying from the, from the city walls, if you will. Repent, come before God, know this is going to happen. You're going to be persecuted. They're going to try to wear you out. Hopefully those who are close to God will be spared the worst of the worst. But then the remnant of the woman, remember, they go after her and they really are hit hard. You don't want that. Take your time now to be seeking God. Many of us will die from various things in the years ahead. Isaiah 57, verse 1. Good, this is out of the New Living Translation. Isaiah 57, verse 1. Good people pass away. The godly often die before their time, as my good friend did today. Very sad. But no one seems to care or wonder why. Boy, we sure cared. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. If there's any good news in dying now from any reason, it's that you know that your loved one who died is not going to have to watch the persecution, watch more plagues and problems. Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of Jehovah is the death of his saints. Now back to the end of Daniel 7. Verse 25, here's, here's where I have Daniel 25. And he, the final world ruler, will speak out against the Most High and wear down the saints. Oppress them. Wear them out. Stress them out. He will intend to make changes, alterations in the times and in the law. He might try to change the calendar. And they will be given into his hand for three and a half years. A time, times, and half a time. But the court will sit for judgment his dominion will be taken away, annihilated, and destroyed forever. And then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms of the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints. Did you get that? Will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions will serve and obey him, and will be helping him in rulership and teaching and setting up the reign of Messiah here on earth for a thousand years. Then we go from there. Romans 16, verse 20, you and I will be that glorious first better resurrection. And then that's what we're focused on, of course. Romans 16, 20, that we have, we have victory in the end. Romans 16, 20, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We are going to look at that dragon and we are going to put our feet over his neck and say, you are defeated, Satan, in the blood of the Lamb. You lost. We won. You killed my loved ones. You killed me. But I'm now resurrected. And I'm a spirit being will say, you lost, Satan. Godspeed that day. So be aware we're going to see much more satanic activity. We'll talk more about it as we see it. Much more coordination be be between world governments. Much more destruction of things of God, like the, like the uh, nuclear family, father, mother, and kids. Much more destruction of the male-female gender thing. Uh, much more destruction of our power as a nation. Much more persecution. Just plain and simple for conservatives, believers, anyone not going along with the all the woke stuff that they're talking about. But we have to understand that our lives in this world, in this time, do not matter. What matters is that you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and being, and strength, and that you love your fellow man as yourself. That you're so filled with God's Spirit. That's your focus. We must decide now we'll never deny Him. And as a result, we'll be acknowledged before angels in heaven by Yeshua himself, by the king. He knows you. We are his sheep. We hear his voice. We follow his voice. We seek his direction, just like Yeshua did his father's word, his father's will. Things are happening. The sermon is designed to say, wake up. Wake up. Change. Overcome. Stop the old sins of the past. If you're drinking too much, stop. If you're watching porn, stop. If you're committing sexual sins, stop. Of any kind. 
If you're unhappy, stop. If you're coveting something that you can't afford or shouldn't have or something that belongs to someone else. If you're breaking the Sabbath and are careless with it, stop. Start keeping it correctly. If you use God's name in vain, stop. Seek him with all your heart. He's the one God. And we seek him. We'll never deny Yeshua. As a result, we will be in that kingdom of heaven. So open your eyes and be ready for the ride of your life. It's going to be exciting. Come, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we just ask you in Yeshua's mighty name that you will awaken each and every one of us to know time is short, to know time could be real short if, we, if you allow us to die tonight, tomorrow, whenever. Please know us. Please let us know you. Please fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your mind and your heart. Live inside of us. Let us live your will. Let us live your words. Let us seek you as never before. Oh God in heaven, we ask for special protection on all these pandemics that will come, that are yet to come, and all the other evil things. We ask for your healing power, dear God, your healing on those who have the COVID and anything else, whether it's broken hips or whatever they have going on, dementia, anything that you do pour out your healing now. We thank you, we praise you, we glorify your holy name. In Yeshua's name, amen. Visit the Light on the Rock website where you can view additional videos, over 270 sermons, and 300 blogs as a scriptural study resource for those who desire to know God the Father and His Son and His incredible plan for all mankind. We are not a church, but a nonprofit organization providing in-depth biblical studies free for all who would like to visit our site. The Light on the Rock Foundation also supports an orphanage in Kenya, providing financial resources to support their living costs and education. We never ask for money. However, any donations are appreciated and will be used to support the Kenyan Orphanage and our site. Thank you for visiting. And if you find these teachings beneficial to you and your family, please share with others.